Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. I'm actually just realizing that my microphone is not plugged in. Let's see if we can get this working. Um, let me know if you guys can hear me or if uh, the microphone might not be working. Can anyone hear me, or are we uh, are we without sound? Can anyone hear me, or all right? So it sounds like we're good to go. Let us post this video in a few places, and then we will jump in. Us. <coughs> okay. All right, so we're just doing a live stream here, um, just ha hanging out like normal, watching watching the prices go up. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin's back at, at 19.5. Maybe I'll come on and and uh, routinely kill kill the uh, pump, so to speak, which tends to happen. Uh, but anyways, we want to go through a few of the coins, see what's going on, and. You know, just see if you guys have any questions and kind of just enjoy enjoy the moment, right? Enjoy the moment. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. So we're looking at five minute candles, five minute candles here. Obviously, the most important candles. I'm just I'm kidding, by the way. But we'll we'll, we'll leave it on here <coughs> just so we can so we can see some of these shorter term price moves. Okay, so that's what we want to see. We want to look at some of these shorter term price moves and see if it can you know what it's going to do here. And you know, if you remember, one of the things we've talked about. I want to switch it over to the daily time frame really quick. One of the things we talked about before, again, is looking at that 20 day, right? We, this, I think it's, I mean, and you know, some people, some people prefer the 21 day EMA as well, right? We look at the 20 week SMA, the 21 week EMA. Um, why don't we go ahead and throw on the, uh, uh, the 21 day EMA, because I know some people prefer that just based on, on the comments that I see. So we'll throw that in there. We will make it bigger so you guys can see it. So pretty similar, right? They give us pretty similar, pretty similar moves. And remember, you know, for the most part, we should stick to longer time frames, right? We should stick to longer time frames than 20-day moving averages, 21-day EMA, stuff like that. But the reason we talk about them sometimes is simply because it can help us, you know, help, really help us determine the likelihood of us being range bound, right? Or the 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 the, the possibility of that happening, right? And, and this is what we talked about with the 20 week, or sorry, the 20 day moving average, which is the green line, and, and we dipped down below it. I'm just gonna hide the 21 week EMA or 21 day EMA. And and the whole point again was, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to when we come down, are we going to come back up and then just keep getting hit down by the 20 day? Is that what's going to happen? Or are we going to move back above it, right? And I'm not sure why this moved to the one hour time frame, but are we going to move back above it? And if we are going to move back above it, are we going to stay range bound? Because again, this is this is still pretty similar to what happened at uh, at 10k, right? You guys, you guys remember the bars, um, and we can just copy them over again uh, from. So we're just going to be looking at, at this move here, and we'll take it all the way, let's just take it all the way over. Right, let's just take it all the way over here. So, overlay it. Whew. So that's what it looks like when you overlay it. And you can see, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a pretty similar move. It's a pretty similar move going up, you know, to this new new top which theoretically is around 20k area 20k or so um, coming back down right here and this 
is what we did at, at 10K. Okay, this is what we did at 10K. And you can see that just right over here, right? If we if we look, well, what did we do at 10K? We came up and then we were range bound for a while. So um, again, we're not we're not saying, right? We're not we're not saying this has to happen by any means, but again, if you're if you have a vetted interest in the in the altcoin market, which I think many of you do, then something like this would of course be nice, right? Something something like a sideways movement here would of course be nice for the for the altcoin market. Um, and one of the one of the reasons is because if if Bitcoin volatility can diminish at a very bullish level, this is the bull market support, then then I think there's a good chance for again going to see these other coins break out. Now, if we look at Ether, we're looking at, you know, these are weekly candles, of course, um, and nothing has happened so far, right? It, it's pretty much humdrum like normal. Yeah, Ether's around 600. No one really cares at this point. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're waiting for something more substantial considering how far down the Ether valuation has bled against Bitcoin. And at this point, let's just see where we currently are. From the wick at the top, we are down about 25%. And at the bottom, we were down over th about 35%. So we've still fallen a, a fairly long ways. But we also know we're pragmatic about things. And we know that historically, the move has not come quite yet, right? It has not happened um, uh, quite yet. And actually, I'm just realizing that my computer is not plugged in. So I should probably plug that in. Okay, um, and and so so what we want to see essentially, right, is 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 the same pattern for Ether play out for the sixth time in a row. And if we if we just go back and look, you know, again we know that this one started. Uh, I mean, we always say it started in in mid January, but the the candles that first started moving were here. And the reason I count this one as the first one is because we had another candle right here that took us all the way down. So practically. Um, the, the last year, the move did not come until early January. And again, the, the, the move before that, um, the year before that, did not come until December 17th, the week of December 17th. Now, December 17th is a, is a funny date, right? Why is, or why is it an interesting day? What happened on December 17th? Well, if you go back... Um, almost exactly three years now and we'll switch over to the daily time frame here and we'll remove that so if you zoom in on December 17th of 2017 I believe it was December 17th yeah so December 17th in 2017 was an important date because that was our top right? That was where Bitcoin had its top, December 17th, and it topped right around 19760 give or take a few dollars, right? What's a few dollars among friends? It depends on what exchange you are using. But more or less, we topped out on December 17th at 19780 and change, something like that. Um, so... So, you know, we just want to, we, we want to take a look now and say, okay, well, this was happened on December 17th, um, and then go back to the Ether Bitcoin ratio. This was a year later, by the way, this was in 2018, and we saw it, it pump then, so starting that, that, you know, third week of December, more or less, the, the actual year that we had that major move, where Bitcoin was at that, you know, that paradigm shift at 20K after rallying from $200 over a few months, the move started... December 11th and it and it continued on until February of or Jan, like the end of January 2018. So that was when this move against Bitcoin um, took place. So we go back even further again this one started January 2nd and then this one started more or less it started um, January 11th or you can make a case for it starting uh, December 28th. So for the most part, right, for the most part, we're, we're talking about mid-December, early January type move. You know, it's, 
when we talk about risk adjusted returns, right, we always want to make sure that if we're, you know, if we're accumulating something, uh, again, there's no free lunch, right? There's, there's no guarantee um, uh, of, of anything happening, but it just seems, it seems right now like it's, it's, it's a fairly decent time uh, for Ether, right? It's a fairly decent time for Ether. And I mean, it's, it appears that the stars have aligned it appears like they have, and and now, I think we just have to wait, and 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 hopefully hopefully it happens, right? I mean, uh, I'm right there with you guys. I, I want to see it it move up too. We also know that again, looking just looking back, the move has not happened. Sometimes for you know uh, uh, three more weeks or or another month or so, so it can take a while. Uh, but I would say just be patient, and we'll hopefully, hopefully, we'll see it rise back up, and and ether just starts shining again. Because when you think about it, Bitcoin is at its prior all-time high. Ether is not even at half of its all-time high. So just something to consider. Um, and I do, I mean, I do think that ether is 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 getting pretty. In you know pretty undervalued um, in terms of its Bitcoin valuation, especially considering where Bitcoin is, right? Especially considering that and how bullish it is above the twenty-week moving average. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat. Someone says they're from cold, dark Alaska. So, and I'm not sure if you guys saw the video, but we did a we did a pretty substantial video of Ether against Bitcoin. And looking at the major moves, we went through each of these. Uh, it was a pretty, um, uh, it was the last video that I did. It was like 20 minutes long. We described each of these moves, so make sure you guys go check that out if you haven't seen it. And this is the Ether Bitcoin valuation with the uh, Bitcoin price overlaid. So looking at Ether USD. Well, first, let's let's go back over here. We'll switch this to a weekly time frame really quick. Okay, and here we are. So again, pretty similar pattern for both Bitcoin and Ether, right up sideways into the bull market support, up sideways down, and then Bitcoin has just rallied back up. And we've seen the same thing with Ether, right? If I mean, just a little bit more pronounced for the most part, up sideways into it, up, sideways, back down, and then it's basically following in Bitcoin's footsteps. I, I mean, I'm pretty bullish on Ether here. Um, as long as, I mean, as long as Bitcoin just does what it's doing, I, I don't see any reason why Ether won't uh, start making moves against Bitcoin. And, and what we mean by that is there's a whole lot, there's a lot of things I think that Bitcoin could do that would catalyze an Ether move, right? A lot of things. Um, the first one being, as we've said before, right, is it, it just going sideways here. And one of the prerequisites that we identified for that was, well, it would be good if Bitcoin could show some, you know, show that it hasn't completely just given up here and it's going to be pushed down by the 20 day. But if in fact it can get back above the 20 day and then if it continues on this pattern, right, and it comes, you know, does something like this, this would be incredibly bullish for for Ether, right? We know this would be pretty, um, pretty bullish for Ether. Um, but the other thing, right, the other thing that could be fairly, fairly substantial as well, is even if we were to come above 20K, right, if we were to do this, then I think, I think the case for Ether is made even stronger in Q1, right? The case will be even stronger for Ether in Q1, and even in a scenario where it slowly bleeds like this, still good for Ether, I think, in, in Q1. The main thing, again, that we, we probably don't want to see is something like this. Right where it drops like that, but even in a scenario, even in that scenario, don't completely discount ether um, in that scenario because uh, if Bitcoin can hold it as support and, and and bounce back up, right? I mean, Q1 is is three months, right? It, it, it's January, February, March. So Q1 lasts a long time. Just because we go back to the 20 week and ether hasn't pumped yet, if we were to do something like that, then it doesn't. It certainly does not mean that ether uh, the show's completely over. It just means we're putting it. We might be putting it on hold for a little while. Um, you know, if you look at if you look at the the BLX and then go back out to the weekly time frame, 
we're still very much on track, right? I mean, nothing has really changed. Again, we're, we're somewhat ahead of schedule, in my opinion. I, I think we are slightly ahead of schedule here. The current fair value is around 11K. Uh, there's no guarantee we'll ever go back to 11K, uh, especially, I mean, if we hold the 20-week moving average of support and confirm, you know, this multi-year bull market, this theoretical multi-year bull market, then we won't go back to 11K in the short term. Um, but that's where that's where the 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 fair value is according to this regression line fit to non bubble data, and the upper bound is now around 16k. Um, so we're still very much on track, and and we're excited. I think we're all excited to see where Bitcoin is going to take us over the next few years. Note that if it were to go to the upper regression band now, um, which I don't think it will, but if it did, like if it went there tomorrow or something then it would correspond to a Bitcoin between 53,000 and 79,000. So somewhere in that ballpark, if it were to go up to the top regression band, uh, like we've seen happen three times in the past, right? One, two, and three. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for getting me to 70,000 subscribers. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've had some discussions with some people, a lot of people recently, in fact, uh, that, that, that are new to this show, right? They're new to the game. They're new to crypto. It makes sense. Prices are going up. New money's pouring in. I don't want to call these people dumb money, as I've said, right? I think dumb money is reserved for way up here. But we'll just say it, you know, it's, it's not the smartest money. Uh, if, you're, if your outlook is three years, you're probably fine, right? And, and one of the things I want to address that I see come up a lot is what if you're new to the space? You know, what if what if you're not even new? What if you just didn't have the money to invest in Bitcoin a couple years ago or over the last two and a half years, but now you do, right? Let's say, let's suppose that now you have the money to invest. Does it preclude you from investing now? And I would say no. I've always contended, right, in, in almost every single video that we talk about with Bitcoin. Is that if you're, you know, if your if your outlook is a multi-year outlook, and and you want a piece of of this market cycle, then I would always contend it's too risky not to hold it, right? It's too risky not to hold it. We talk a lot about it, you know, it, it going down to the twenty-week moving average, and it will, right? It will go back down there at some point. We talk a lot about, um, you know, the risk levels and and whatnot, but at the end of the day. If you don't own any Bitcoin, right? I mean, I, I'm coming from it from a, a, a different point of view. I'm coming from it from a point of view where, you know, I've been accumulating for a couple years, right? And and when we're above these levels, like we were back in 2019, I just personally don't like to buy Bitcoin in that region. Now, that is not an indication that that also means that no one should. I mean, I hope some people do to keep the price of Bitcoin moving up. But, but my point is, is if you don't own any, then I would personally consider it too risky not to hold any if your outlook is, is say, two or three years, right? If your outlook is longer time frame, then I, I think it's okay. If your outlook is like a 90-day time frame, it's, it's a gamble, right? And again, you don't need crypto to gamble. Um, so... I just want to make. I just want to reiterate that because you know a lot of a lot of times I get I get comments saying okay well if if you know if if we're only buying up to a certain risk level or whatever it may be, uh, what if I only own like a small point uh, you know a small allocation of Bitcoin but I have this like stash of money on the sideline that I want to I know I want to know what to do with it, um, and that's when I just say a lot of times it's best to uh, and again this is not financial advice but I think a lot of times I, I will just suggest like you know lump sum then DCA. You know, in, fin in traditional markets, right, in traditional markets, uh, lump sum is almost always better than DCA, right? It just is. I mean, and, and there's no arguing around it. If you look at the data and take, you know, a, a hundred million different scenarios of someone DCAing into the market versus lump sum into the market, more times, uh, it, you're a much higher probability that the person who just lump summed ultimately um, makes more money. And the reason, I, in my, you know, the reason why for, for Bitcoin and for crypto, I don't think this is necessarily true, is, I mean, so stocks just tend to trend upwards, right? When you, when you have things like Bitcoin, it does trend upward. 
But if you're if you're coming in and doing lump sums right over here for there's you know there's there's months and months here right where you're, if you're doing lump sums you're still down 50 60 70 percent 80 percent a year later right and so this is this is what we want to avoid right we want to and the same thing for for those coming in in 2019 you know there was a lot of interest in in bitcoin in 2019 when it went up to 14k and you could have made the same argument and, and i think it would have held you could have said well it's it's too risky not to hold but you also have to recognize that if you're buying here it's definitely not as smart as if you had just been buying in this region that we had been talking about right and the same thing here it's not that it doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it if you don't own any it just means that if you want to manage say your risk exposure to the market then that that's the whole point right it's the whole point is trying to manage your risk to the market and by the way i mean like we're, we're still we're still um at least i'm personally i'm not buying bitcoin right now but there's other coins i'm buying so you know you have to you have to consider that um and again i will say it one last time since it seems to get lost if i did not own any bitcoin any then i would still buy it uh you know up to higher risk levels right i would still buy it and and I would not I would not think twice about it. I would just say, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen in the short term, but I do think it's going to trend to six figures over the next few years because I think that I'll just start buying it. And if it goes back down, great, I'll get more. If it goes back up, great. At least I got some and didn't wait for the dip that didn't come for three months or something, right? Okay. So just a little, just my um, you know, little segue or, or or tidbit again about it. There's not a one size fits all approach. And, and we can't pretend like there is because it really depends. It, it really depends on your own risk tolerance, right? If you're, if you're, and, and especially like if you're, if you're older, if you're, if you're trying to save for retirement, you don't want to be as risky as someone say in their twenties and, and someone who wants to be very aggressive with their, with their investment strategy because they have longer to make it back. If in fact it goes down, imagine, you know, imagine if you're about to hit retirement and you throw all your money into Bitcoin at 20k and and then it goes back down to 14k or 15k or something like that and it and it takes a while for it to get back up and you need to draw out of that money then that can be where it, it can become a problem um but as long as you have a multi-year outlook I, I i don't think it's that big of a deal um we're going to be here every step of the way and i do fully anticipate that over the next few years we will trend up to six figures right that's my general thinking of this market cycle is that we will trend up to six figures over the next few years. Um, what, what kind of questions do you guys have? Make sure you guys make sure you guys sub, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you guys like the content. Someone says that owning half a half half a coin, so half a Bitcoin, is enough to retire in five to seven years. I sincerely doubt that because I think you probably underestimate um, what you need to retire, and it also depends on very specific cases, right? What what someone at twenty needs to retire is a lot different than what someone needs at sixty five to retire. Because if you're twenty, you need to make sure you have enough to where you can live off, say, the interest in that position and say a pretty low or conservative investment that you can just draw the interest out of it and live off that. If you can't, if you can't do that, then you can't really retire. Um, and it's as simple as that. I mean, if you think about it, like uh, if, if you own half a Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin goes, let's be optimistic and say Bitcoin goes to like 200K or something, that's still only a hundred grand. Um, that's not, I mean, a hundred grand's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but it's not enough to necessarily retire on, right? I mean, a hundred grand is not. I mean, that doesn't. It's not like it's going to last for like thirty years or something like that. Yeah, someone makes a good point. I guess it depends on where you live, right? If I mean, if you're in like a if you're not in, say, like, let's say you're in, like, a, a developing country or something like that and you own half a Bitcoin, yeah, I mean, maybe that would be 
enough to retire on. So I, I should retract that and say, I guess it depends on where you live. Omer is now going to be hidden from the channel because of constant spamming. He's spamming so much, it's like hard to, hard to even uh, click it. All right, bye. He says sorry, but it's too late, buddy. You've already been you've already been blocked from the channel. Your comments will no longer be seen. So I'm not trying to say that to be um, uh, you know condescending. I'm just I'm just saying it. So don't, don't waste your time commenting because no one can see it anymore. If you're gonna spam. <laughs> I just I just wish people wouldn't spam the chat, right? Is that is that too much to ask? <laughs> Alright, let's see what Bitcoin's doing. Alright, so 194. Pretty nice surge today. Let's go look at the shorter time frame and see what's going on. So we topped out right around 19,565 or so in the short term. <laughs> everyone, everyone, so um, yeah, poor, poor Omar is is no longer no longer in the chat. And now, now you guys, now you guys make me want to unban them. <laughs> Do I believe the crypto market cap has any significance? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think the market cap will have. I mean, I guess it depends on what you mean by significance, like in relation to what exactly. Sorry, I don't, someone said, what is the green line? It's just a useless moving average. <laughs> All right. I'll see, I'll see if I can unban Omar. We'll see if we can do it. I don't know though, there's, I've only done it like one time before where I tried to unban someone. It's really hard to find them. So let me see if I can find where he is. Uh, settings. Community. Um, I don't see him. Like, it's hard because you have to, like, search through everyone, and I don't see him, and I don't want to spend an hour searching through everyone on here. I don't know, guys. I don't see him on here. And I feel like it would take too long to try to find him. He's not at the top of the list or the bottom of the list. So, it is what it is. Uh, Omar, Omar is no longer, <laughs> no longer on the channel. <laughs> All right. Um, let's actually let's actually do something useful. So let's take a look at Link. Uh, so Link is now at twelve eighty four. We've had three major bubbles now, right? We've had, and I actually kind of wanted to do this because I've I've done it before, and I just want to look at like you know the time between this pump and this one. 
So that was a long one, right? This was 532 days. Uh, um, okay, Tony Clark is now hidden from the channel for spamming. All right, so this one was 532 days. Between the next one and the next one, we had around 413 days. So, um, you know, I I have no idea, right? I don't, I don't know how long the next one will take, but, I mean, so far it has been about 119 days, right? It's been about 119 days since the last pump, um, and, and we'll see where, where this next one takes us. We do know that Link is very undervalued against Bitcoin right now, right? I mean, it, at least in terms of the exponential fit. So, and, and, you know, I've said before that we know the exponential fit won't last forever. Uh, it just simply won't. Link will not gain on, on Bitcoin exponentially forever. But uh, as, long as, it, as long as it does, we'll take advantage of the trend. Now, this is a pretty nasty move, right? I mean, from the top all the way down is 60% or so. Uh, to the bottom, it was around 62%. We've seen similar stuff though, right? I mean, even even with Ethereum over here, from this peak down to this bottom, Ethereum bled around 78%. Uh, here in June of 2017, to the bottom, Ethereum bled around another 84% against Bitcoin. If we start here, it bled to the bottom, let's just go to the candles, around 67%. So just because it does this does not preclude it from ever recovering, right? It just, it's more or less exactly what we've seen with other coins that have come before it. So uh, we'll keep an eye on, on Link and see if it does, if it can turn around against Bitcoin at some point. Yeah, maybe the PC fan is loud, but I can't really do anything about it right now. Omer coin, Omer 2024. This will be the stream that Omer will we'll have to have a few, a few, um, few thoughts and words for for Omer for for being banned. Yeah, the premium list does have access to this stuff. Uh, the funny thing is, if someone's joining right now, like they're gonna have no idea what the hell chat's even talking about. Right, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's take a look look at Ada. Ada's actually doing pretty well, right? It's it's back up at almost sixteen cents. Ada has had a pretty good year. It's been quiet recently for the most part. It's had a pretty good year, so I would I would still keep your eyes on Ada. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember. It doesn't show it on here, but uh, when it first launched, I don't know if you guys were were around uh, crypto back then, but it went from like two cents to thirteen cents in a very short period of time. And I remember when it did that, uh, and it was crazy because it, it went up like, you know, like 6x in a very short period of time. And then after it got to 13 cents, it hovered at 13 cents for a little while, and then it went to 39 cents, right? It went to like 39 cents for a couple weeks or so, and then after 39 cents, it went up to, uh, what was it, like 75, 76 cents, something like that. And then it had the final rally up to like a $1.30 or something. Um, Keep an eye on ADA. I would say definitely keep an eye on ADA. And, you know, it looks like, a, I mean, I know you, we're, not, we're not much for traditional TA, right? We kind of see the, the, the W that, that people, people really like to talk about, right? So we'll see, we'll see if we can continue, continue this rally here um, and, and move on back up. Uh, by the way, ADA versus Bitcoin is, is, is back down a little bit, all the way down to... 815 Satoshis, uh, and I'd, I'd still say it's an, it's an accumulation mode, right? Because, I mean, we're the A to Bitcoin valuation is still back into, if we get rid of these green lines, you know, it's back into this region. And this was the region back in 2019 and 2020, we were saying, okay, this is the accumulation phase for ADA, right? This is a huge accumulation phase for ADA against Bitcoin. It rallied on up, now it's come back down, uh, and it's sort of composing itself right now. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see if the rally can continue. 
um, link ether, it's, it's, it's had better days, right? It's had better days. Maybe it looks pretty similar to this move back over here, back in, in 2018, where it kind of, um, you know, we had, we had two distinct moves, right? We had a bleed and then a quick bleed, like a, a candle like that. And then we had a slower bleed at the end. Um, so if you look at it, right, so it came down and then it had a sharp bleed and then a slower bleed back up and then it sort of recovered and then it went off. We're kind of seeing something similar, right? It's bleeding, we had a sharp candle down and then a slower bleed. And we'll see if it can stabilize here, right? We'll see if it can stabilize here because ultimately, you know, if we're holding things like Link, if we're holding things like ADA, we want to see them outperform Ethereum and Bitcoin at key times during the market cycle. And if they can't, then you have to you have to wonder, you know, you have to you know you have to justify why you're holding them. And again, the the valuation of Ether or ADA against Ether has these three well-defined peaks. Um, and if we ever get back up there, then I, I would say don't miss out on that opportunity, right? Um, kind of like one or one, two. Three, I don't know, lengthening, lengthening cycles maybe. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what this one does. We'll see if we if we just come straight back up or if it's going to be a more elongated one like that. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll follow along, and, and this is certainly one we're going to want to keep an eye on for the duration of the market cycle. And, and by the way, I mean, it could have intermediate moves right where it comes up and then comes back down and then ultimately goes back up like that. Um, but just something to keep an eye on. VeChain against Ether. Uh, looks pretty good too. I mean, as good as it can look, I guess, uh, for a chart that's not that old. But um, in general, accumulation phase of VeChain against Ether, uh, and the general cell regions of VeChain against Ether. And I, I again, I typically are, are, are operate on the idea that it's not different this time; that it's more or less the same. So if we were to ever go back, if I, I mean, if I did only it and we, and we went back up to this region, uh, let's just call it a day, right? I, I mean, I would call it a day. I don't know about you guys, but I would. So Bitcoin's still at 19.4. What other questions do you have? Oh, make, make sure you guys subscribe uh, to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you guys enjoy the content. I can't believe we got to 70,000 people. Like I, I remember earlier this year, we were just trying to get to 40,000 before the year ended and then Bitcoin took off and now we're at 70,000. Uh, so thank you guys again for subscribing and, and, and supporting the channel. What do you mean? What program am I using? This is TradingView. Like, uh, I mean, it's TradingView. Can't you? I mean, like, look, the the website is called TradingView.com. Daniel, I'm glad you like the content. Now I'm afraid that like every live stream I do, you guys are gonna bring up Omer and and talk about talk about that time that he spammed the chat and I banned him. And right when I banned him, he said sorry, and it was too late. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if I can scroll, and I don't think you can. I don't think you can undo it. Yeah. I mean, I think we just need to have some, you know, a moment of silence for him, and and then move on. This is this is why we're gonna have to start doing um, uh, live streams for just the premium list in 2021 because there's no way there's no way we can get through anything anything here with with like 500 people talking about talking about this guy. Uh, 
All right, Cody, I'll get rid of you too if you want to if you want to troll. All right, I think I'm going to have to do um I'm gonna. I might try to. I might try to put on uh, slow chat in here and, and see what's going on with slow chat. All right. Slow chat is enabled. I believe slow chat is enabled. I just base it off off the analytics. I don't really look at the news cycle stuff. Do I like turtles? I guess they're okay. I actually went to the Final Four back in like two thousand and what was it, two thousand one, two thousand two, when Maryland won, and they were the the Terrapins. <laughs> I remember that. I feel like I'm not even actually able to talk about anything useful because everyone's so concerned with Omer. Yeah, I mean, I I, I just want to you know focus on um, uh, doing this stuff full time, right? So that's why that's why I recently recently quit. Can I talk about the Patreon? Well, I mean, if you guys if you guys are interested, again, you can check out the premium list. We still have the sale going on. I know I keep saying we're going to end it, but everyone, it uh, seems like there's still a lot of interest in it. So remember, you can check out the premium list in the description below. Um, you get access to the weekly reports, the weekly videos. These are premium videos and stuff. Um, trading, view, or trading view indicators, the Telegram alert channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard. Uh, and then next year, we're going to start having uh, premium member only live streams. So you got to check out the premium list in the description below. We'll run it for a little, we'll run the cell for a little bit longer. Um, uh, I think with so many new eyes coming in right now, it's pretty, pretty interesting to see so many new people uh, because I get a lot of the same questions, right? It's, it's typically, well, what if you don't own any, what do you, what do you buy then? Um, oh, looks like John Bartholomew's back. Thanks, John. If you guys don't know him, he's got a pretty pretty impressive chess channel. If you if you're looking to um, learn about chess, Someone says, uh, if if Ethereum pumps in Q1, what's the time frame when you believe we should DCA sell back to Bitcoin? I don't think it's a specific time. I think it's just based on, on the nature of the move, right? So we can't say it'll happen in one week. We can't say it'll happen in four weeks. Basically, it'll depend on, I mean, the risk levels, right, if you're on the premium list. Or if you're not on the premium list, right, and, and you just want, you know, I mean, if you, if you practically... If if you're if you're if you're watching Ether over the next few months or something, and and you're looking at it down here and wishing that it could go up, if you see it go back up here, right, then you know recognize how far it would have come. And from the current price, that would be like a seventy percent move, sixty-five percent move, seventy percent move. 
Um, and I mean, if you think about it, if if Bitcoin is 20K and Ether is able to make it to say a 0.05 valuation, right? Then we're looking at a $1,000 Ether if, it, if Ether can make it to a 0.05 valuation and, and Bitcoin's at 20K. So uh, I, I would say just be pragmatic, right? I mean, I would stick to the risk levels for the premium list. If you're on that, you'll have access to that. If you're not, I mean, just try to look at maybe some of the other trends uh, that you can see. You guys are, you guys are hilarious sometimes in the chat. Yeah, I know there's people in the comments pretending to be me. If you guys want to help me out, you can always, you can always like report these imposters that were pretending to be me in the comments. Not on the live stream, but on, on like mostly, mostly it's, it's on the, on the pre-recorded videos. Will there be an exclusive Christmas discount on the premiums? I think I'm just going to keep the current one going for a little bit longer because there's so much interest in it. So um, you can you can continue to sign up at the lower rate for a little while longer. I promise you it won't go back up. Uh, I mean, certainly in the next few weeks, but I'm not sure exactly when. You know, I've thought about I've thought about doing other videos, um, and and some of the videos I've thought about doing are are like, you know, beside. So I I don't want to do the news, right? I, I don't want to do the news. There's plenty there's plenty of great YouTubers that already cover the the news in the crypto space, and it's just simply not something that, that interests me that much. Uh, but there are some things that that do interest me, um, and and essentially what it boils down to would be. You know, increasing right, increasing the amount of crypto you have, whether it be through um, like liquidity pools, whether it's you know staking, uh, using some of the platforms that can generate interest. You know, I've, I've thought about talking about these. I don't really know. I mean, what do you guys think? Would that be something of interest to you? You would you prefer me just to stick to this kind of stuff, more of the uh, this kind of stuff, or you want more? You know practical applications of, of things in the crypto space that you can use not news right so not news but like what are things like how can you take advantage of various things that exist in crypto to maybe increase your stack um, in a way that does not involve trading right so like just accumulating interest um, there's a lot of ways you can do it right there's tons of ways you can do it um, we can maybe present a few different options okay so it seems like there's decent decent amount of interest um, so yeah, maybe maybe we'll do maybe we'll do that. Yeah, I, I basically it, it would basically be like passive income. Uh, so essentially, essentially the the reasoning behind it, of course, right, is is you know if you have a lot of Bitcoin or Ether or whatever it is, and you just want to hold it for a few years, and you have no interest in trading it, there are there are you know platforms do exist out there where you can earn interest on 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 these coins. You know, if you deposit to their platforms. Now, of course, there's there's risks involved with that. Again, there's no free lunch. There's always a risk. Anything in life, right? There's you know, you're watching my live stream right now. There's a risk in watching my live stream, right? Maybe you miss some very important event somewhere else that's happening, uh, and and then you look back and be like, oh man, I should not have been watching Ben's live stream that night. There's a there's a risk with literally everything you know that goes on. So. Um, so we'll we'll do that. We'll we'll take that. We'll keep that in mind and say, okay, we know there's a risk involved in everything, right? Uh, with that in mind, are there ways that you can accumulate more? And and sometimes you know sometimes I think people might assume you know if you if you look at interest rates and you see something that's not so attractive because you say oh like I mean, it's like six percent, ten percent, whatever it is. I mean, ten percent would be great, right? Don't get me wrong. But like a lot of, I, I see a lot of people do this, right? Where they kind of stick their nose up, uh, something like that, because they they think of it like, oh, well, ten percent is nothing, because 
you know, if I mean, Bitcoin can 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 fluctuate by 10% in a day. But if you think about it, if you're not trading it, and and you're you're in it for the long haul, and you're earning you know some nominal percentage yearly, and it's compounded, right? You keep investing that back in. Um, over a few years, right? Over a few years, that could be worth a lot. And, and if you think about it, right? Imagine you have a certain amount of ether or a certain amount of Bitcoin, and it's earning a small amount of interest each year. Uh, but it does that for a few years straight, and then the value of ether or the value of Bitcoin, right? Imagine they go up by 10x or something. Uh, then that small amount that you accumulated could be a lot more, right? I mean, it could be it could be substantially more. So um, the way I like to think of it, I mean, first of all, it, it a lot of the interest rates that you can find in crypto are great right now, and um, I don't know how long they're going to last because a lot of times if they're if they're astronomically high, then it's not sustainable and it's more or less they're you know they're doing it to get you to join their platform, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? I mean it's it's just free money, but at the same time, you know if if the interest rates are very high, then we 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 would not necessarily expect those to stay that high for very long because if you can find interest rates that are so much better than you can find in say traditional finance. Uh, there's probably a catch to some degree, right? And it, and it might just be that the catch could just be that the risk will or the the interest rate will only stay that high for a certain amount of time before it goes back down, or there's unstated risks that you're just not aware of. Um, so we'll keep that in mind, right? We'll keep a pragmatic approach. We'll 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 stay we'll stay cautiously optimistic, right? Cause what I like to think cautiously optimistic. But I think at least we should cover some of it because if you just want to hold Bitcoin and Ethereum for a couple years. Uh, and then start thinking about okay, well, where do I want to? Where where might I want to take profits? There there are ways that you know we can we can um, there are ways that you can do that. So <laughs> someone says I should have been a banker. Uh, I actually prefer. I, I don't. I don't really want to do that. Did someone literally make a YouTube channel and name it Free Omer and then come back <laughs> and say, what would Omer do? <laughs> John says, ever considering offering courses? You know, I don't, I don't really have any courses. I just have the premium list. You can check that out in the description below. It's, it, I mean, it's sort of like a course, I guess, because you, you can unlock like... <laughs> Like like thirty something reports and videos, but um, it's not a it's not a very very specific uh, course or anything like that. All right, Mickle, see you later. Is risk synonymous with opportunity cost? I mean, the way I think about opportunity cost is, I mean, I mean, I guess there's somewhat, but I mean, opportunity cost is, um, you know, if you're if you're just simply putting a dollar somewhere, that means you're not putting it somewhere else, right? But risk kind of takes it into account each specific asset, the idiosyncratic risk of that asset. There's the market risk of of the entire asset class. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty uh, complex. Yeah, everyone, everyone's coming to Omer's rescue, but he literally was like spamming the chat. Like, I couldn't even see what was going on. What I do, do a Zoom meeting with Patreon members? I think we're just going to do live streams next year. So starting in 2021, um, I'm going to be doing this full time. And we're just going to do, we're going to do live streams for just the premium list occasionally. What well, moving averages do I normally throw up? Well, it depends. I mean, for, for Bitcoin, it's usually the 20-week SMA and the 21-week EMA for the Bitcoin bull market support.
Remember to subscribe to the to the channel if you guys like it, and give the video a thumbs up. I think we can make it to 400 likes. We're not that far away. Someone said DXY update. Sure, we can pull it up. So, I mean, it hasn't, I'll switch over to the daily. It's more or less kind of, um, hasn't done a whole lot in the last in the last week or so. It came up, when it went up, Bitcoin went down, now it's coming back down a little, Bitcoin's going back up. Uh, but it hasn't really done a whole lot. Am I concerned about the, the the coins released from out? God, no, I mean I'm not because the I mean they have this they have this literally pops up every few months, um, the same thing over and over and over and and then a lot of I mean historically it, it then they don't get them and they kick the can down the road. I don't really care about I don't really care about that. Yes, John. Um, uh, this is, we're actually going to explore this space in 2021. Uh, so I haven't I haven't said it yet on the channel, um, but one of the things we're going to to also look at in 2021 are um, non fungible tokens NFTs. So uh, that will be a topic we will discuss in 2021. I don't think Bitcoin's going to drop to 15% dominance. I mean, it, that, that would be pretty low. I don't think it's going to get that low. I tried to unban him, but I couldn't find him in the list. So it is what it is. Uh, we talked a little bit a lot about link Bitcoin, right? I mean, it's 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 down about sixty two percent since the since the peak. Um, we don't really know what it's going to do during in a bull market, but again, we're gonna we're gonna keep following. I mean, against USD, it's it's doing pretty well, uh, but I think it's more important to look at look at how it's doing against Bitcoin because again, it's you know holding link the opportunity cost, right? It's all about the opportunity cost. And by the way, I mean on the premium list, we were selling up here, right? All documented selling it selling at the top. Uh, to be fair, it was we sold at several different places on the way to the top. This was not the only sell, but there was one sell at 1850, around 150,000 satoshis back to Bitcoin. Um, and then I personally bought back in. We'll see. I mean, we'll see if we go back down below it. I don't know if we will. There's a good chance we will. But I just wait for the link USD risk to get below 0.5, and it happened here on this wick uh, when it went to below eight dollars. So it happened there. It also happened on this week, and at that time it was around this level. And then it happened last week when it went below 11.44. So we barely touched it last week. Um, but that's when I buy Link. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how they how it holds up if we if we can continue to stay above those levels or not, or if we enter a more elongated accumulation mode. Hey Daniel, yeah, um, yeah, I think we will we will talk about it. 
um, next year. And if you want to talk about it more with me, feel free to reach out to me through email or something through the website. I mean, the, the problem with the fear and greed index is that it was created after 2017, right? It was created in 2018. And if if it's at a 95 right now, like what would it have been at, at the end of 2017 once it was up 100x? What would it have been at the end of 2013 when it was up even more or the, or the you know, back in the 2011 run when it was, when it did even more? So like to say to say that it's like you know it's like at a ninety five it's great and all but it, it doesn't even it doesn't even have history going back to twenty to even late twenty seventeen so I I I mean I think it can be useful to sometimes look at but I, I sincerely question um, you know how valuable it is because if it I mean it's it's pretty high right now but again it, it's never even uh, it doesn't even have data going back to before twenty eighteen so I don't I don't really know how useful it is. Let me see if I can pull it up because you guys are, you guys are talking about it. So we'll we'll pull it up. So here is the Bitcoin. You know, someone made the site. It's the Fear and Greed Index for Bitcoin, and it's currently showing a ninety-one. Um, and if you if you zoom this out and look at Max, I mean, it's basically just been above ninety for weeks now, um, and you can see that it only goes back to February of 2018. So if we're currently at a 91 and we've been at like, you know, we've been around this level for a while, what would we have been back at the end of 2017 when we were up 100x? You know, so I mean, that's that's just something to consider. And so I don't I don't know how useful it will be simply because it's I mean, it's it's calling you know, um, this run in 2019 from 3100 to 14k uh basically as greedy as we can get essentially i mean at 95 and and so what would, what would it have been like in 20, 2017 right what would have been like here what would have been like here what would have been like here i mean look at this run this run here was you know 60 something it was like 60 something thousand percent in in like two thirds of a year so i don't know i mean it, it might be useful to some people i don't really use it that much I think we I think we did our job, right? I mean the live stream typically the live stream job is to is to kill the rally. Mission accomplished. 193. You know how you know how we'll make sure lengthening cycle theory is true. We'll just live stream for the next three years. <laughs> Why do I not mention BNB and Bitcoin Cash? 
Um, I don't know. I just don't want to. Uh, I mean, BNB is an okay coin. I, maybe I could talk about that one more. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't really, I don't really have too many thoughts on on Bitcoin Cash. It's it's more or less one of those other niche coins that I, I feel like its main competition are just going to be stable coins that may or may not even exist yet. Um, so I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it, it can it can pump with the narrative, of course, but. Uh, I don't. I don't personally own it. I mean, because you know, I, I would rather put my money in things like Ethereum um, and and Chainlink and other coins. To be, you know, that's my own preference. Yeah, thoughts on Polkadot. I, I this is one I'm accumulating. I, I I think this is a a decent one to accumulate. Yeah, someone says they have two babies under three. Yeah, I have three. I have three kids. One is four. One is one, and one is two months. So, um, not getting as much sleep right now as I normally do. Any thoughts on Tesla? I mean, what does it really say? I mean, it just keeps pumping. Um, I, I, I still own some. I, I did sell a decent stack of my Tesla, uh, but I still I still do own about thirty percent, and I'm I'm just letting it ride. Uh, we'll see we'll see how high it can go. I don't have any thoughts on waves. Yeah, we can we can take a quick look at Monero. So here we are. Pretty nice rally. We're currently at one fifty three, right? One fifty three or so. So I mean, Monero's had a Monero has had a pretty nice rally. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll hopefully it continues. I mean, this is looks like a pretty pretty impressive move, right? I do own I do own a little bit of Monero. It's one of the few coins uh, that I own besides Bitcoin, Ethereum, Link, Ada, and DOT. I do own a little bit of Monero, so I, this is why I talk about it from time to time. I mean, it's a pretty nice move, right? Kind of just kind of going around this trend line, maybe. Benefits of moderate risk tolerance for aggressive versus aggressive. Well, the nice thing about moderate is that if the bubble is a short, you know a, a smaller bubble, then it allows you to take profit sooner. Um, the benefits of aggressive is if the bubble continues to pump and pump, then of course it'd be nicer to have more more Bitcoin to hold on to. Someone says laugh out loud extreme TM Monero. Yeah, I mean I, I'm not I'm not really looking at at a, at a whole lot here. It's it's one of the coins I just sort of hold and I forget about it for a while and, and at some point we we check back in with it and see how it's doing. Um, I, I mean pretty it's a pretty nice trend. We'll we'll see if it if it continues. I 
I mean, we've been going on, on this for what, since, since April? I mean, so since this point, it's up, what, 200%? Whoo! Let's get the popcorn out. The live stream. The curse of the live stream strikes again. When did we start streaming? Wasn't it like... When, when was it, exactly? We've been going for, what, an hour and ten minutes? So, what's that, like... Um, these are these are five minute candles, so like fourteen. So we started we started live streaming like I think somewhere in here. So here we are, the curse of the live stream back again. Lengthening cycle theory, one live stream at a time. Ooh. These are one minute candles. Would people with less than two Bitcoin be better off holding massive amounts of alts for around 2024 to 2025? I wouldn't say specifically a certain time frame. I, I would say let's see how the market cycle plays out and if every indication is that we're near the top. I wouldn't necessarily wait until 2024, 2025, because I actually think 2024 or 2025, somewhere around that time, will actually be a bear market. Oh, we're back to 19.1. So, I mean, it came back up to what, 19, 19.5 or so? I mean, we're still we're still very much in bullish in bullish territory here. Even in nineteen, I mean, we're still what? Uh, let's let's take a look at the. Uh, let me pull up a different uh, different chart and let's pull up uh, the twenty day. So the twenty day is at eighteen six, eighteen six seventy one. So I mean, we're essentially doing exactly what we would want to do if if your goal was to is to see a sideways Bitcoin, right? If we if we see a sideways Bitcoin, that would hopefully, I mean, hopefully in that case, we would come back down, right? And then do something like that. If you don't want to see a sideways Bitcoin, then you don't really care about it coming back down. You just want it to, you know, to continue to go up. But I mean, nothing nothing too crazy, right? We're still at 19.2. <laughs> These one minute candles are um, fun to look at. Am I in the camp that Bitcoin will increase in 2021 rapidly or no? I, I think it'll take longer. I, I don't think it'll be in 2021. I mean, I, it can go up in 2021. I, I think it will trend, uh, have a pretty good year, uh, or for the most of the cryptocurrency market. I mean, I, I don't know if it'll if it'll be positive or what, but I think the next few years will be good. I think 2021, 2022, 2023. I think those will be good years, for the most part, right? There's gonna be there's gonna be down times. Where everyone gets sad and, and and thinks the party's over, but I, I think it's just going to be uh, an elongated cycle. Yeah, I mean, by the way, we're 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 completely being sarcastic. I mean, this is not a, a massive dump, right? We're we're at nineteen two. We were, I mean, yesterday, right? I mean, like not even that long ago, we were at we were at nineteen k, less than nineteen k, and in fact, 
three days ago, four days ago, we were all the way down at 17.5. This is not a dump, right? This is not a dump. But it can be fun to look out on one minute time frames. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm not saying it can't turn into a dump, right? I'm not saying that, but this is not a dump yet. Oh, we're going back down a little. So again, if we if we wanted if we want to establish kind of a sideways movement and 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 make room for altcoins, right? We want to see something like that. I mean, and not not that that has to happen, but that would certainly be nice, right? If something like that were to happen. What other questions do you guys have? Remember, if you guys do like the content, to subscribe to the channel, uh, give the video a thumbs up, turn on your alerts, and then also check out the premium list. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description below. We'll have this sale going on for a little bit longer since there's a lot of interest in it. You get access to the weekly reports, the weekly videos, um, alerts channel on Telegram, risk dashboard, trading view indicators, and next year live streams. <laughs> Freaking Omar, oh my gosh, you guys are ruthless. Someone, someone, um, someone said I need to change the title. What if we just, what if we just flip the chart? Oh, now this is, this is trippy if you haven't seen this before. So this is where we're, where we are, are, are flipping it. So if you look at the prices, um, going down means the price is going up and going up means the price is going down. So, I mean, this is, this metric is surging, right? This is a, a, a nice surge here. But again, this is this is Bitcoin where it, the, the chart is inverted. It's actually kind of funny because when you look at it, when you look at it inverted, you know, like when you look at it, it just, it's an interesting chart if you haven't seen it before. Um, here we are. So this was the top here and then we broke through. This is the top here and then we broke through. And then this was this top. 
and this is where we currently are. You think it'll it'll break through, or you think it'll bounce back up and then break through later? I don't know. I mean, I don't think it would bounce that much, but. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, if, if for people who like traditional TA, I mean, when you look at the inverted Bitcoin chart, you know, a lot of people might say a double bottom, right? Right here, and then three years later. Basically, almost to the T three years later. But, I mean, you could have said the same thing here, right? You could have said double bottom here, and then we, we came to it, bounced back up, or down, and then came back, and then continued on. So it looks like Ether is back to 584, Link's back to 1268. I don't know. Maybe we should call it. What do you guys think? All right. I feel like we should call it. I don't really feel like there's anything to talk, left to talk about. Oh, someone said that what's the ticker for the inverted chart? So if you want to if you want to pull up the inverted chart, um All you got to do is you just you, you, you go up here and then you put in zero like so if you just do zero dash Bitcoin USD and then hit enter it'll it'll pull it up for you so you just put a zero dash in and you can pull up the inverted chart. You guys think I should end the stream so the price can start rallying back up. I tried on banning him, but I can't find him. All right, let's end it. Let's call it. Let's call it here. Uh, again, if you guys like the content, subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Let's get to 500 likes if we can. Uh, and yeah, check out the premium list sale. We'll keep it going a little bit longer. Uh, you get access to a lot of stuff like the training view indicators, the reports, the videos, the um, the risk dashboard, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, and future live streams. We have a lot more coming on the channel in 2021. We're going to explore other things, um, not just not just the quantitative. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll obviously mainly focus on this stuff, but there's a couple other things I want to I want to explore with you guys and and. Uh, really explore the space and, and other ways to to make money, right? It's it's about making money, and right, that's the point. So uh, make sure you subscribe. We will 
ended here. And hopefully when I go off stream, uh, well, maybe we'll see the price pump back up and, and we can again talk about the correlation between my live streams and the price dumping in the short term. That'll wrap it up and we will see you guys next time. Bye.